The options market is utilized by every single floor trader at every single bank, at every single prop firm. It is something that you need to understand to level up your trading. If you're looking at the numbers ticking behind me and it looks like Chinese to you, don't worry, you're in the right place. Welcome to my three-part series that's going to be a full tutorial on options. In today's video, we are going to go over the introduction to options, in which I'm gonna talk about what options are, the different types of options, and why options exist. And then in that third part there, we're gonna get a little bit of a sneak peek into how you can take some trades on options. So be excited for that. Hit like if you're ready to go, and I'll jump into it. Options are a representation of price at time on an underlying stock ticker or futures or crypto or commodities. You can trade options on almost any market. Let's stick to stocks though. This is an intro course. Let's keep it simple. So currently I am looking at the SPY or an S&P 500 ETFs option chain. And I'm looking at May 17th, 2024, and I have a list of prices here in front of me. So that means if I am looking to hold one of these options on 17th of May, 2024, it will need to circulate around one of these strike prices, either up or down. And I'll talk about that in a second, but for me to make money, that's the bet an option buyer, an option holder is making that the price of the underlying will be above or below the strike price at the date the option expires. There are two types of options. If you're watching this video in 1080p, you'll be able to see labels up here for calls on the left side and puts on the right side. Calls Give the holder the right, but not the obligation to buy the underlying ticker at the agreed upon stock price with the option seller and puts give the holder the right, but not the obligation to sell the underlying stock at the agreed upon price with the option seller. This means once again, for the example's sake, SPY 17th of May, 2024 is the expiration. SPY is currently trading at 510 and a quarter. If I come down and I buy a 512 call, if before or on the day of May 17th, SPY is above 512. For example's sake, say SPY is 520 on that day. I will be eight points above the agreed upon option price that I bought, but I can go buy, and this is important. This is a step you should write down. For each contract I bought, I can go buy 100 shares of the stock at 512 because that is the option that I hold. That is my right as an option holder that I can go buy 100 shares per contract that I hold at the strike price if you're in the money, you of course cannot do that if you are out of the money. If on May 1st, SPY is trading at 509, I of course cannot go buy SPY at 512. I mean, first, why would you want to do that? And second off, uh, it has to be in the money to execute. Vice versa, say I buy that same 512 May 17, but I buy a put and then say on you know May 15th, SPY is trading at 505. I then have the right to sell 100 shares per contract that I own at 512 to the person that sold me the option. The person that sells you the option is taking on your risk. You are paying them the premium, which I'll talk about in a second, for them to assume your risk. So if the price goes down, you get to sell to them at a higher price if you own puts. If the price goes up, you get to buy from them at a lower price, making you profit either direction. But what is that price? The astute of you out there would have already noticed both a bid and an ask for puts and calls at every single strike price. This is called the premium. This is the premium that you are paying the option seller to assume your risk. And since options are 
at a 100 share leverage when this says that the bid for the 510 put expiring on May 17th for SPY is at 545, that means that each options put at that price is going to cost you $545. Whenever you look at an options premium, if you want to know the actual cost, you need to slide the decimal point over two places times it by 100. That is your actual cost cost. Let's break this down extremely scientifically in notepad here. So SPY currently trading around $510. Say you as an option buyer want to make a bet that SPY is going to go up from now until the 17th of May. So you want to go buy this 511 strike call. So if I type in 511 call with a 17 May expiration, the current price is sitting at 630. Let's just make it, eh, we'll make it 630. So um, you're going to pay $630 out of your pocket. So this actually, let's have it be minus. You are now out $630, but of course you own the option and the right to on the 17th of May buy 100 shares, we're doing this with one contract of course, of SPY at 511. So the seller has sold you this call. The seller is up $630. The seller immediately, let me do this for ease sake. The seller immediately collects the premium. The premium is immediately appears in their in their portfolio. Good for the seller now, maybe not so much later though. Let's say on expiration, at close on the 17th of May, SPY has closed at $500, $520. Great. You have done great. SPY is 10 points higher than it was when you entered your option to buy it at 511, right? So you now get to buy 100 shares. And if the option expires, you will automatically, unless you tell your broker otherwise, which is a whole nother discussion, but you will automatically be filled 100 shares of SPY at 511. That is nine points cheaper than it's currently trading at. So you make $900 on that day, which means you end up profiting $270 overall. Now that money has to come from somewhere, right? The seller is the one responsible for selling you those shares. So they are now out that $900. They are the ones that just lost $270. That is the idea of how a straight call option works. And if you, if you want me to, I can go do a put option as well. You know what? Let's just do it. This is an intro video. Uh, let's say you are in a do same scenario, but you go five eleven put instead. Well, let's make it five Oh nine put. Cause you want to buy one out of the money. That's a whole different conversation for part three of this tutorial, how options are priced, how you determine what strike price you want to purchase or sell at. We'll have those conversations later. For right now, let's keep it simple. That put currently costs $510. So you are immediately out $510. The seller is immediately up $510. Now, so we don't just repeat ourselves, let's do this one the other way around. Let's say this time you made a bet, right, that SPY was going to go down between now and May 17th. But let's still leave that idea that SPY on 17th of May closes at 520. It did not go down. Your put expires out of the money. That means you are not meeting your right to sell 100 shares of SPY at 509, right? Because when you're looking for the obligation to sell, the underlying has to expire lower than your strike price. Since it doesn't in this instance, you are simply out of your $510 and the option seller gets to keep all of that $510 of profit. The option seller won. The option seller still had to assume your risk. They took on your risk. You paid them $510 to assume your risk, to protect you from that downside.
but since it didn't go down, you won, or the option seller won, should I say. Before we jump to part three of this video of why contracts exist, and we talk about a little bit more complex spread type orders, I want to go over one more situation with you. So I've reverted back to the 511, actually, sorry. I've reverted the numbers back to when we bought our 511 17th of May call expiration, right? We spent $630 on premium, the seller collected the $630, right? Well, let's say now on expiration, SPY expires at, or SPY is trading at 515, let's call it. In your head, you might go, oh, good. I bet SPY was going to go up. It went up. I make money, right? You actually don't. This is where premium and paying premium for risk comes in. You, on that day, buy 100 shares of SPY at 511. Means you profit $400. But guess what? Since you paid, obviously, $630 in premium, you still end up losing $230 on that day. And once again, vice versa for the seller. Yes, the seller's going to be out $400 on that day, but they still profit $230. Overall, that's a very important thing to remember when buying straight options. You have to outperform the premium to make money. The spy, the the the, the underlying that you're looking at has to expire above or below the strike price plus or minus the premium. So the current premium on this 510 put is 550. That means on 17th of May, the break even price for SPY is 50450. It needs to be below that for you to actually be profitable, to outperform not only the strike price, but the strike price minus the premium, and then vice versa. For the call, for the 510 call, it's currently trading at 690. So on 17th of May, SPY needs to be above 51690 for you to actually make money on a straight call or put. I keep using the word straight. We're going to get into that in just a second into how you can utilize options more so than just betting a stock is going to go up or down. I'm going to say that options exist for four main reasons. Reason number one, speculation. That is what we just discussed in buying calls or buying puts. You are speculating that the underlying is going to go up or it's going to go down. Reason number two is going to be income generation. And I'm going to call that the other side of the trade, the seller of these options that are willing to assume risk to generate themselves income, to sell options or to write options to the speculators, to the buyers. Number three is for leverage. We've already spoken about how each option contract represents 100 shares of the underlying. So if you wanted to buy 100 shares of SPY at 519, you would only need to pay 250-ish dollars for the right to do that so that if on May 17th, it expires above $519 while currently trading, it's actually now trading at 509, dropped a little while I'm making this video, you saved yourself uh, what is that? I mean, you saved yourself six, $700 utilizing leverage in that instance. Now, maybe the most important to what I want to talk about the most is reason number four, and that is hedging, protecting your investments. Congratulations. You just bought yourself a $1 million home. Now, if you live in California, maybe it looks a little bit more like this, but you just bought a $1 million home. What is the first thing you are going to do after purchasing this house buy home insurance, right? Say your uh, insurance company wants to charge you $10,000 a year to protect your $1 million asset. That is you paying them to assume your risk. That is just like we talked about in the options market where the options buyer is paying the seller to assume a higher leverage risk. Now let's relay this example into stock. Say today you went and bought 100 shares of SPY at 510 for a grand total of $51,000. That's a good chunk of change for you. So you decide to put an insurance policy on it. You decide to pay the insurance agent. You decide to pay the option writer 
to assume some risk for you, right? So you also buy a 510 strike put that expires on May 17th, the premium of which is 570. And as we spoke about earlier, as an option contract represents 100 shares, you multiply the contract price by 100 to get the price that you pay. So today, you are down $570. That's the premium that you paid for your risk to your assessor, to your, uh, in this case, option seller, right? Well, let's give the example that on May 17th, the SPY is expiring at $500. This would mean that your investment down 10 points on 100 shares, you lost $1,000, right? Oh man, it's not been a good, you know, couple of weeks, you're down a thousand bucks. But ding, 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 you paid an option writer for the right to sell your stocks, sell your 100 shares at 510. So you could still go sell and you could go sell your 100 shares at the initial $51,000 that you purchased it. Now, you're still out the $570, but instead of losing $1,000, you now only lose $570, which means you saved yourself in this instance $430 with your put protection. And that obviously means also that the option writer, the one who assumed your risk is out of that $430 because they now own a hundred shares of spy that is currently trading at $500. They now own it at $510. So of course they could hold on to the shares and hope it comes back. But if they decide to then immediately sell, they would be out the $430. Hey, I've just whipped up another scenario onto the notepad here for you. Say on May 17th, on the date of expiration of your 510 put, SPY's actually trading at 530. Great, it's up 20 points from your entrance today. That means you're up $2,000. Now, you need to remember that you paid some premium to a seller to assume risk for you. So you are still now just straight down that $570. Remember that you paid for the put. That means, I mean, you're still up. You still made $1,430, but it does cut into some of your profit. The option seller now, this is where we talked about the purpose of options, why options exist. Step number two, the options seller in assuming your risk gets to generate some capital for themselves as they get to keep, just straight up keep that $570 in their portfolio that they sold you this put option for. Next up, we're going to talk about option pricing. So as you may have noticed, these options have been moving around in price the entire time I've been making this video as I'm making it during market open. The next part is going to talk about why options move the way they do, why they're priced the way they are. And then in the third part, we're going to talk about some much more complex option trading strategies. So make sure you all hit the like button on this video if you enjoy this idea. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next two parts. And I'll see y'all then.